Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel, and I am now answering question number seven from the June 2024 um, replacement paper, the R paper for the Pure Mathematics 1 P1 paper, International A level at Excel. And this question here is all about straight line graphs, and we're given this diagram. So there's a straight line L1 shown on figure two, which I've copied down to here has equation 5y equals 2x plus 10. The points A and B lie on line 1, such that the point A lies on the y-axis, and the point B has x-coordinate 10. So there's 10 and the y-coordinate B, which we don't know. Um, find the distance AB, writing your answer as a simplified third. Okay, so we need to find the coordinates of A and B. So for A... We know that it's on the y-axis. A is the point on the y-axis. On the y-axis, x is equal to 0. So if we take the equation of the line, 5y is equal to 2x plus 10, then we replace the x with 0, because on the y-axis, x is 0. So you have 5y is equal to 10. So y is equal to 2. 10 divided by 5, which is 2. So the coordinates of A are 0, 2. So we also need the coordinates of B to find the distance between A and B. So to find the coordinates of B, B is on the point where X equals 10. As they told us, the X coordinate of B is 10. On the same line, 5Y equals 2X plus 10. Point B lies on the same line. And so we can replace the X with 10. So we have 5Y equals 2 times 10 plus 10. So you have 5Y equals 20 plus 10, which is 30. So y is equal to 30 over 5, which is 6. So the point B has coordinates 10 and 6. So we want to find the, the distance AB. Okay, the distance AB is basically going to be given um, by the length formula. The magnitude of the line between the points A and B is going to be given by the square root of... Now this formula, like xA minus xB squared plus ya minus yb squared is basically Pythagoras' theorem. It's basically what we're doing is we're making a right angle triangle. So just in case you didn't under or realize this, it's, you know, we're, we're basically making a right angle triangle between a and b. Okay, just joining up the points horizontally and vertically. Okay, so I know that xa minus xb is basically this distance here. In this case, you would say xb minus xa. And we know that this is 10. This is, remember, this was 10 and 6, right? So this, from here to here, is 10 units. And between A and B, vertically, remember, A is 0, 2. And B is 10, 6. Okay, so that distance between here is 6 minus, which is 4. So using Pythagoras, because this is a right-angle triangle, we find the length AB. So that's what the formula automatically does. When you find the distance difference xA minus xB, it finds this distance here, and it squares it. And then you find this distance here, and you square it when you do yA minus yB. And you find the square root of the sum of those, you've got the distance AB. That's Pythagoras' theorem. That's what this formula automatically does. So you don't really have to draw that diagram there, but just to make you understand where it comes from. So xA minus xB is going to be 0 minus 10. And you square that, you're going to get 100 plus... And then you're going to have 2 minus 6, which is minus 4 square that. You're going to get 16. So you're going to have the square root of 116. Okay. And it tells us to give the answer as a fully simplified set. Now, your calculator will do that for you. But it's better for you in such a question to give your answers, like show that you use your, you know, your brain. So you've got to think of how to split up 116 into two a product of two things where you've got a perfect square kind of factor. So you think of ways of writing 116, okay, um, where you have two numbers which are perfect squares. So 116 divided by 2, that's going to give you 58. That's not, none of them are perfect squares. Does 3 go into those? No. That's 2 plus 6, 8. Does 4 go into those? I don't think so. 4 goes into 10. Uh, 4 goes to 11, uh, 2 times the remainder 3. Yes, it does. It gives you 36. 36 times 4 is 116. Is that right? That's 4 times... No, it's not 36. 26. No, that doesn't work. Then that Well, 4 is a perfect square, so then we can keep that. OK, 
Okay, four, 26, that's 80 plus, 80 plus 16, that's 106, not 116. Four into, tw tw sorry, four into uh, 11 goes two times, remainder three. Four into 36 goes nine times, 29, sorry. 29 times four. Okay, so that's one um, perfect square. All right, that might work. I think that's, that's all that you're going to find here. So it's going to be root 4 times root 29, which is 2 root 29. And you can check in your calculator, and you can find out. So you have the square root of 116 gives you 2 times root 29, and there you have your answer. Okay, so you can put in your calculator to get your answer straight away, but it's better in, in P1 to show your, your steps, um, when, especially when they ask you to give the answer as a fully simplified third. Um, it's better for you to, to show your steps in this kind of question. So there's your answer for A, and now for B, it says um, the straight line L2, which you can see here, is also shown in figure 2. Okay, and it's telling us um, that the straight line L2 passes through the point B and is perpendicular to line 1. So there's a right angle between them. They're perpendicular. Okay, so finding the equation for line 2, writing your answer in the form AX plus BY plus C equals 0, where A, B, and C are integers. Okay, so now... We know to find the equation of the straight line, we need two things. One of them is a point that it passes through, and we have the point. We know B, and we know the coordinates of B was 10, 6. We already found that in the first part of the question. This was 0 and 2. Okay, and we also need to know the gradient of the line. Okay. We need to know the gradient of the line. Now, because we have the equation of line 1, okay, for line 1, we have the equation 5y is equal to 2x plus 10. So if you make y the subject to express it in the form y equals mx plus c, you have 2 over 5x plus 2. So this is the gradient of line 1. This is the gradient of line 1 is 2 fifths. So the gradient of line 2 is going to be equal to the negative reciprocal of this, which is minus 5 over 2. Okay, two lines which are perpendicular, their product is negative 1. So if you know the gradient of 1, the gradient of the other will be, have the opposite sign, and it will be like the, the, the uh, fraction flipped upside down. The denominator and numerator switch places. Okay, so now we can use our formula y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And I kind of like really encourage strongly my students to use this formula in order uh, to find the equation of the straight line. Most students are, are stuck on using y equals mx plus c from IGCSE. And it's fine if you use that, absolutely fine, no problem. But you'll find as you get more and more involved with your maths and get more and more kind of complicated type of gradients and whatever, uh, you'll find that this will just make your life a lot easier. Okay, so in general, um, I would encourage strongly for you, for you to, to switch to using this to find the equation of a straight line. So y minus y1. Now here, in, in this type of question, y1 and x1 are these two coordinates. This is x1, this is y1, and this is m. Okay, so you have y, you leave y and x as they are. So y1 you replace with the y coordinate of the point. The gradient is minus 5 over 2. The x you leave as it is, but you take the x1 and replace it with the x coordinate of that same point. So this is um, set up now. Now, we want to have this answer in this form where a, b, c are integers. In that case, what I would do here is I would multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of the fraction. So you get 2y, don't forget both terms, 2y minus 12 equals, and you got minus, I'll just keep this here to make sure that we don't mess up. Okay, so I've, I've, I've got rid of the 2 and the denominator, and now I can just simplify this 2y minus 12 equals minus 5x plus 50. And then I want to write everything on one side, and it's always best to keep the, the x term as positive. So what I'll do is I'll add 5x to both sides. So I have 5x, the 2y is already there. I've got minus 12 minus 50, which is minus 62 equals zero. And there is the equation of the straight line Okay, which is line two um, in the form required. And there's the answer to this question, number seven, part B. Okay, now moving on to part C. It says line two crosses, um, one second, line two, where's my pen gone? Just hold on a second, sorry everybody. That's better. Line two crosses the x-axis at the point C. Okay, point D 
is such that the points A, B, C, and D form the vertices of a rectangle as shown. Find the area of rectangle A, B, C, D. Okay, so we already have the length of this, which was uh, 2 times root 29. Let's make sure. Let's see if my memory serves me correctly. 2 times root 29, good. So that's the length of the line A, B. Okay. Um, if I find the length of B, C, that's all I really need because the area of rectangle is a length times width. So if I find the length of B, C, then I can multiply these together. I don't really need to find anything about D. It just tells us it's a rectangle, in which case I know the area is AB times BC. So the area would be equal to the length of AB multiplied by the length of BC. So we know that already the length of AB we already worked out is 2 times root 29. Okay, so we need to find the length of the line from B to C. Now we know the coordinates of B already are 10 and 6 and C we can find because we know the equation of this line. So to find the coordinates of point C, we know that the X coordinate is 0 and the Y coordinate is, uh, sorry, the X coordinate is what we're trying to find. So X coordinate of C, the Y coordinate is 0. Okay, the Y coordinate is 0 because it's on the X axis. Anything on the X axis, the Y coordinate will be 0. Okay, so we can take this for, this is for line 2, which is uh, 5x plus 2y minus 62, minus 62 equals 0, minus 62 equals 0. So when y equals 0, you're going to have 5x equals 62, so x equals 62 over 5. You can leave it like that for now. All right, so that's going to be the point 62 over 5 and 0. So therefore, the area, um, well, the length first of line BC, um, the length of line BC, yep, the length of line BC, okay, would be given by, um, the square root of the x coordinate subtracted, which is 10 minus 62 over 5 squared, plus the y coordinates subtracted, which will be 6 minus 0 squared. Okay, and that should give you the length of BC. Okay, so that's going to be um, 10 minus 62, that's going to be 20 over 5. Let me just put it in the camera. All in the calculator see what comes out. So you're going to have brackets uh, 10 minus 62 over 5. And that's all squared. Plus 36. 6 squared is 36. All square rooted. That gives you 6 root 29 over 5. That's a nice number y because you've got another root 29. Therefore, it will make it easy for us to find the area now in an exact form. Well, they didn't say in exact form, but just do that anyway. So the area is 2 times root 29 times 6 times root 29 over 5. Okay, so you have 12 over 5 times 29. Because root 29 times root 29 is 29. So you can work out what that is. So you have 12 times 29 divided by 5. Gives us 348 over 5. 348 over 5 square units. Okay, so there's the answer to part C of this question. Simply finding the area of this rectangle by multiplying these two lengths. Okay, and that concludes the question number 7 from the June 2024 R paper of International A Level Pure Mathematics P1 from Edexcel. Other questions from this paper can be found in the playlist that will appear on the top right of the screen at the end of this video. Other questions dealing with uh, straight line graph questions from P1 of Edexcel, you can find them in the uh, playlist over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. And on the top here, you can find a video which tells you how to, uh, you know, how to navigate my channel to help you find what you're looking for. Thank you for watching and see you soon.